please take your seats and if you have your Bible, would you open it to 1 Kings? Praise God. Um, you know, God's been speaking to me a lot about this year to come and uh, th this, uh, this year of new beginnings that God has uh, given us. Uh, you know, the year of Jubilee isn't even over yet. I just heard a testimony last week of someone in the congregation who uh, they, their, their, household, their, their household income has just trebled in the last week. Isn't that great? When God is doing something, you know what? He's, he, he's, got, he's got proper style the way he does it. Thank God. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. So, uh, you know, one of the things that we've learned in Harvest over the years is uh, when God names a year to grab it, to say it's mine, uh, that it's, that it's it, you know, and no devil in hell can stop it. No distraction. No offendability. There's always going to be reasons to upset, uh, to be upset with your, with your brother, your sister, uh, your, your wife, your kids, your dog, uh, your cat. Uh, I mean, you, you name it. There's always going to be opportunities, but it's what you do with those opportunities. It's never what life throws at you. It's how you deal with what life throws at you. And uh, we've learned that through the years. And, you know, when God started to say in uh, September last year that 2018 would be a year of jubilee, you know, we started, we started jubilating already. And, uh, you know, the word, the, every time you see the word Jew, J-U, in the uh, Hebrew context, it has to do with praise. So Judah. The word Judah means praise. Jubel was the first uh, musician uh, in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, the Bible says he became the father of all those who play the harp and, and the lyre, etc. And so when we started digging into that, we started just seeing that it's more than just debt cancellation. To limit God to something like that is, is to really inhibit the Holy One of Israel. And really, when we have God in our lives, the best thing you can do is turn him loose. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, turn him loose. Yeah, let God loose. Let God live big on the inside of us. I remember uh, Kenneth Hagin, Dad Hagin of old, used to say that, you know, one of the things that the body of Christ lacks, he said, we have to become more God inside minded. We have to know that the Holy One of Israel lives on the inside of us. And once we allow him free reign, Father, pray through me, speak through me, bless the world through me, make me a, a fountain of blessing for this sick, lost and dying world, then God can live big. He can be released to be what he wants to be in the lives of others. Can you say amen? amen. So God started speaking to me about 2019. And uh, it was only a couple of, in fact, you know what? It was at Nando's in Brent Cross. You said something. This is, the, stand up Mark and Mary just for a second. This is Mark and Mary Van Gundy. They're pastors from Tottenham. Uh, they have released their, their church. Thank you, guys. And they've, they've joined Harvest, and they are going to be out missionarying in the world, uh, very much like Bruce and Sharon did. And um, I know that God's got great things for you. And Mark was sharing that the Holy Spirit had told him that uh, this year coming for them would be a year of flourishing. So I'd love to give you a copy of that book, actually, uh, the book of the month. Who's got it? Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, so that's because that's, by Jerry Seville. Jerry's a great man of God. He's a great friend. And uh, so anyway, um, Mark was talking, and he just said something in Nando's at Brent Cross. And I thought, wow, that's exactly the time that God speaks to me. He said... Uh, he said that every year around the Jewish New Year, around the Feast of Tabernacles, the Jewish New Year, God starts to speak to him about the next year to come. And I thought, wow, because I've always, in my mind, it's always been between September and December. I've never, I've never pinned it to a particular, uh, you know, like festival or anything like that. And uh, then it just, it just triggered in my spirit. I said, well, that's exactly when God starts speaking to me about the year to come. And he said that 2019 is going to be a year of new beginnings. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, there, there's something, when God says, behold, I do a new thing. It's amazing how he does it. Because many of the time, uh, many, of the, many times, he, 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 he adjusts something and then suddenly it's like wow gosh this really is a new thing 
And it happened before our eyes, and we didn't even know that that's what he was doing. Do you see what I mean? It's just quite remarkable the way he does it. And so I started saying, Rao, Father, well, whatever this means for harvest, let it be done. Let it be done. Behold, I do a new thing, says the Lord. It will spring forth, and yet will you see it? And it's like when he says something like that, the way that he says it and the way that we can add our faith to it can multiply what he's doing. That's why God needs, he needs that resource that he's given us called faith that he can trigger it, make it come alive, and then suddenly it will bloom in your life. How many are you excited for what's going to come this coming year? Praise Jesus forever. Hallelujah. So I was, I was then praying about it, and many times, you know, one of the things that it's important to know is that, uh, in fact, Scripture says it, that God has used the people of Israel, the children of Israel throughout the ages as examples for us, particularly in the body of Christ. And I started seeing, like, from, from God's perspective, what's been happening in the lives of the nation of Israel. Um, it's, it's the most important nation on earth. The second most important nation on earth is the nation of America. Both of them were founded on covenants. It's really important to understand that, that the nation of Israel was a covenant nation. God has looked after the children of Israel all for the last 2,000 years without a homeland, without a, uh, uh, th th any kind of preservation on the culture, on the language, on the race. And yet he's brought them out from the nations just as he prophesied through his prophet Ezekiel right now and established them as a nation. And it's a remarkable thing. And sometimes when you look at the nation of Israel and you, you, you discern what's going on, and I started to just see something this morning. I thought, wow, that's a really important point. And then I said to the Holy Spirit, I said, Lord, you know, show me what you want me to, to uh, speak to your people about this morning. And it was the exact same theme. I said, wow, God, you're amazing. The way you put things together. It's quite, quite remarkable. And I started to see the nation of Israel, what they've gone through this year. It's very difficult to tell anymore what's going on in the world if your source is the mainstream media. Because they have an agenda, and their agenda is so big and so within their grasp that they're, they're doing everything that they can to push that agenda through. And that means that they're going to report and accentuate some things, and they're going to completely ignore other things. And you see it all the time. When I watch the news headlines now, it's like I've already dis discounted what the news reader is going to say, because oftentimes I know the backstory of actually what's happened. And what a sad state of affairs for that to be, but particularly in relation to the nation of Israel. And in the last year, the nation of Israel had suffered something like 4,000 different attacks. Now, I don't mean some guy just going mad in the street and stabbing a few people. There's been about 60 of those. I mean actual rockets going in from Gaza, from Lebanon, from Syria into, into the nation of Israel. And God was showing me this in a flash this morning as I was praying. I said, well, Lord, what's that got to do with us? And he said, beware. In 2019, he said, beware of distractions. I said, I get it. You see, thankfully, there's been very few deaths in the nation of Israel as a result of the terrorism that they suffer on a daily basis. Merciful of few deaths. And they have this uh, missile system called Iron Dome. Have you heard of Iron Dome? Basically, it's a counter-missile missile system that's precise to within about five feet. And it's the most remarkable technology that you can find. And it can, some, it can, it can intercept something like 300 rockets at a single time. It's quite, quite, quite amazing. And, you know, in the realm of the spirit, we have the same thing. It's called prayer. With, with prayer, with pressing into prayer, you can intercept the plans of the enemy. He's already launched the rocket, but the rockets will fail as a result of the interception of intercession. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's amazing how God does that. He'll just, like, he'll just set the thing up so that the enemy will blast off some rocket, and then suddenly somebody somewhere is interceding. Boom, the thing fails. Boom, the thing fails. Boom, the thing fails. 
And you know that, that whole scripture, Isaiah chapter 54, uh, is one of my favorite scriptures. I think from verse number 17, it's like the waters of Noah to me, says the Lord. Just as I said that the waters of Noah would not kill Noah and his family, so it is with you, says God. For I've created the smith who blows the coal and who fashions a weapon for destruction, but no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment shall be condemned for your sake, says the Lord. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication is from me, says God. That, my brother and sister, is our iron dome. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's important to know because you know what, what, what's going on in the world right now, what's going on in the UK right now with Brexit, what's going on with people stabbing each other up. Like, like what on earth is all that about? Just, you know, uh, what do they call it? Uh, drill rap. What? And all kinds of just nonsense going out in the world. And the Bible says concerning us, a thousand may fall at our side, 10,000 at our right hand, but we shall not be harmed. We shall only look upon the recompense of the wicked. Hallelujah. What's that? Iron dome. Praise God for the Holy Spirit iron dome. Talking of prayer, the all night Friday. Who enjoyed that one? Bang! That thing just came out of nowhere, man. That was amazing. So uh, by God's grace, we'll see that man again. Praise the living Jesus. I'd said to God, Lord, I'm going to bribe that sucker to come back fast. In Jesus' name. Bible says nothing works like a bribe. Glory to God. So 2019, we've got all this stuff unraveling. We're going to have people's agendas. There, there may, you know, be... Uh, overthrows or elections or God knows what and fighting here and there. You know, there might be stuff on the street. You can see what's happening with Paris, with Brussels now, uh, spreading across Europe with this yellow vest thing that people are just fed up of the way that government has been oppressing them and everything like that. But you know what? Let the nations roar. That's what the Bible says. Let the sea roar and all it contains. As for us in the Iron Dome, Hallelujah to Jesus. We can be praising God in here and all hell can be out there. But it shall not encroach on our territory in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Distraction. Some of you in this year of new beginnings. In fact, you said something, guys. Uh, you, you were just with Bruce and Sharon on missions. You said something, Abby, when I met you in the corridor, and you said, uh, at the back there, and you said, I just want to do this for the rest of my life. And I said, in my heart, I said, wow, praise God, she's found her ministry call. Yeah. Glory to God. Now, this is the thing, you see, when you, when you found that thing, then don't, don't look to the right or to the left. Look straight ahead. Look straight ahead to your destiny. Because where God, in, in, in the year of new beginnings, some of you, you'll find, you'll find your slot. Do you know what I mean by your slot? You'll find your lane. And when you're in your lane, ah, that's it. The sense of fulfillment that comes as a result of finding your lane is just, it's, it's magnificent. You can flourish. You can grow. You can prosper. You can be blessed. Not only that, you see, but the way God does it, when he slots you in, into your lane, he'll impart on you a generational blessing at the same time. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. May you find your lane in 2019 in Jesus' name. So anyway, I was, I was meditating in the presence of God this morning, and I just saw this scripture. And you know, it's one of these scriptures that really scares me. Have you, have you seen stuff in the Bible and it scares you because, you know, our God on one side, he's, he's a good God. He's a loving father. But on the other side, he's a mafia. <laughs> hey, some of these things, even, even you see people say, oh, yes, well, under the new covenant, brother. I mean, under the old covenant, brother, yes, praise the Lord. Our God was very vicious and blah, blah, blah. And then you turn to the book of Revelation. The first three chapters. And you see what God was doing to some of these people where they were just out of kilter. They were like, dudes, sort yourself out or I'm going to kill you. Ah, my God, he's a mafia. God, he reigns from heaven above. And I was reading a couple of them this morning. 
And it was like, whoa, you know, to the church at Thyatira. He says, he says, you know, he says, you're doing great. You're blessed, but you tolerate the woman Jezebel. I'm going to kill her. I'm going to put her on. I'm, I'm, not only am I going to put her and anyone who sleeps with her on a bed of sickness. He said, but I'm going to kill her kids too. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild. The holy one. You, you understand? And then suddenly, right, right, out comes the sword, dude. I'm coming. And it's like anyone who does that, repent in Jesus' name. I don't want to be doing funerals. Amen. Oh, glory to God. So I'm, re I'm reading this, and then I'm thinking, wow, you know, the church at Laodicea. New covenant again. The church at Laodicea. You're neither hot nor cold. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, make me hot, Lord. Yeah, I want to burn for Jesus when you see something like that. Ah, so he, he would tolerate. Isn't this amazing about God, right? If you're on fire, then he's with you. If you're the frozen chosen, he'll be merciful for you. But God help you if you're lukewarm. Literally, literally in the Greek, the Holy Spirit, through John, he says, you're neither hot nor cold. You make me puke. Hey! Our God is a puking God. He reigns. I'm reading this. I'm saying, Jesus, what is this going into the new year like this? God help us. But like, is there any room in that there Catholic church that I left? <laughs> Praise God. And then, and then I read this scripture. I said, God, that's enough. Please, 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 please. But I get what he's saying. He's saying, get your focus. Maintain your focus. Uh, my spiritual father, Kenneth Copeland, uh, was the spiritual son of Dr. Oral Roberts. Who Richard, you know Richard who preaches here. That's Oral Roberts' son. Anyway, and uh, uh, Ken Copeland used to be Oral Roberts' driver. And then he became his pilot. But one time when he was driving the car, and Oral Roberts would never talk to anyone on the way to a meeting or anything like that. He would just focus in the presence of God. He will get in the moment. He will get that anointing from heaven. And then he would hold it. And so Copeland was used to this, just driving and, you know, Oral Roberts not saying anything at all. And, like, they'd, you know, they'd do this for months. And then one moment, Oral Roberts opened his mouth just out of the blue, like after like three months of silence in the car. And you know silence can make you nervous. It's one of the things they use in uh, negotiation. If you know how to use the power of silence, that the vocabulary of silence, they call it, is very powerful. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, one day, Aura Roberts just out of the blue, just starts opening his mouth and, and speaking to, to Ken Copeland. He said this, he said, you know, son, one of the greatest keys to success in ministry. Number one, get the will of God. Number two, don't consult flesh and blood. Number three, do everything in your power to see that that comes to pass. And then he went quiet again for another six months. Isn't that amazing? That's like, you know, that's, that's the kind of guy Oral Roberts was when he was in the, in the anointing. And, uh, but Copeland said he never forgot it and he, he never, ever deviated. He took that as a rhema word as if God was in the back of the car himself speaking to him. And I thought, wow, you know what? This came to remembrance. When God speaks to you and you know it's God, then, you know, calling up 50 friends and asking them often will only get you confused. Because like when you know God for yourself, that's, what, that's, that's the thing that he wants you to do. He wants you to get to know him for yourself. Well, Pastor P, it's all well and good for you to say that. How do I do it? Well, number one, you lock out the world. N number two, you purpose in your heart that you're going to live by the word of God. The Bible says, let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. There's something about allowing the word of God to get in you, that when it's in you, when God then speaks to you, you'll recognize his voice because there's enough of his word on the inside of you. Amen. So there's a resonance on the inside that God wants us to have. Psalm 62, the Bible says, it says, once it was said, Twice I have heard it. 
Well, if it was only said once, how can you hear it twice? It's because you've got an inner witness on the inside of you to teach you and to raise you up into the things of God. So consulting flesh and blood becomes less and less and less important. If it's an accountability issue where you need to speak it through with your wife or with your husband or, you know, with your pastor or with, you know, if it's a mon monumental, like, you know, God just says, oh, thus says the Lord, give up your job and go to China, then you, you may need to seek common sense or a, a psychiatrist. It depends on, on well, <laughs> whether it's God or not. Amen. Well, praise Jesus. Some of the goofball stuff I've heard. Glory to God. First Kings chapter 13. If you've not found it by now, then just forget it. Uh, first Kings 13, we'll read from the first verse. I'm going to go really fast. First Kings 13. Wow. Now behold, there came a man of God from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord while Jeroboam was standing by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord. Behold, a son shall be born in the house of David, Josiah by name. And on you he shall sacrifice the priests of the high places who burn incense on you. And human bones shall be burned on you. Then he gave a sign the same day saying, this is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar will be split apart and the ashes which are on it shall be poured out. Can you see what I was doing now this morning? I'm reading this after seeing the, the rockets coming in and the distraction and then reading about Jezebel at Thyatira and you know it's all mounting up on me I'm saying God Jesus help me verse 4 now it came about when the king heard the saying of the man of God which he cried against the altar of Bethel that Jeroboam stretched out his hand from the altar saying seize him but his hand which was stretched out against him dried up so that he could not draw it back to himself the altar also was split apart, and the ashes were poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said to the man of God, Please entreat the Lord your God and pray to God for me that my hand may be restored. So the man of God entreated the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him, and it became as it was before. Then the king said to the man of God, come home with me, refresh yourself, I will give you a reward. But the man of God says, if you were to give me half your house, I would not go with you, nor would I eat bread nor drink water from this place. For it was commanded by me, by the word of the Lord, saying, you shall eat no bread nor drink no water and return by the way which you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way which he came to Bethel. Now an old prophet uh, was living in Bethel. And his sons came and told him the deeds which the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which had been spoken to the king. And these also they related to their father. Their father said to them, which way did he go? Now the sons had seen the way which the man of God of Judah had come. Then he said to his son, saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him and rode away on it. So when he met the man of God and found him sitting under an oak, he said to him, are you the man of God who came from Judah? He said, I am. Then he said to him, come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I cannot return with you, nor go with you, nor eat the bread or drink the water with you in this place. For a command came to me by the word of the Lord, saying, you shall eat no bread, nor drink the water here. Do not return by going the way which you came. And he said, I am also a prophet like you. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with him to your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him. You see, it's getting kind of freaky in there, isn't it? And so he went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank water. Now it came about as they were sitting down at the table, the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. And he cried to the man of God who came from Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the command of the Lord. Imagine the same guy. The same dude. Imagine. Because you have disobeyed the command of the Lord and have not obeyed the command of the Lord which your God commanded you, but have returned and eaten bread and drunk water in the place which he said to you, eat no bread and drink no water, your body shall not come to the grave of your fathers. It came about after he'd eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled the donkey for him for the prophet who had brought him back. Now when he had gone, a lion met him on the way and killed him. And his body was thrown down to the road with the donkey standing beside it, the lion who was also standing beside the body. And behold, men passed by and saw the body thrown on the road and the lion standing there by the body. So they came and told it to the city where the old prophet lived. 
My goodness, the story continues, but you, you get the point. What was going on there? What is God saying? Distraction. Beware distraction. Beware distraction. For, for this year of new beginnings, right, when, when God shows you something new, when he gives you something new to do or something, you know, often it can be a person just come into your life that he calls you to bless. It's amazing how God just calls you to be a blessing to anyone who's around you. You know, in this day and age with, you know, asymmetric networks and, and smartphones and everything like that, you're more likely to know a person in Hong Kong than you are on your street. And it's amazing that it's just the way of, of the, the world right now, the world that we live in. But, you know, God is calling us be a blessing to them. It doesn't matter if they're around, bless them. Let your neighbors know that you love the Lord. And, you know, whether they want to or not, every year we invite our neighbors to something. Just because one year they might say yes. You can get a thousand no's, but the one yes is worth the thousand no's. Can you say amen? amen. And it's amazing that, that the, you see, once, once there's something for you to do, right? If, if, you, if you take this as a warning about not consulting flesh and blood. I don't know what this old guy was doing. Maybe he was jealous of the new thing. You know, they always say that the biggest hindrance to a new move of God is the old one. That the biggest hindrance to David wasn't Goliath, it was Saul. And it's, it's, just, it's just like that, that that it's one of those things that the enemy tries time and time again. Oh, that we were in Egypt because we had cucumbers. Dude, where did that come from? Can you imagine? Moses leads you out by signs and wonders, and you're missing cucumbers. <laughs> what? But you see, that's, that's part of the thing. We've got to know where God has called us. We've got to know what he's called us to, and then just establish it then. Say, Father, Lord God, show me. What am I to do next? I remember, in fact, it, I'm, I'm sure it was a gateway to the ministry that I have now. Um, when I first went to, uh, ch to, into church planting, I was part of a team that went down to Docklands. And we, we planted this work. There was only five or six of us. We planted this work in a real, like, I mean, the Isle of Dogs has changed beyond recognition now. It's actually kind of a nice area, parts of it, which is a miracle. And when we were there, you know, like if your car was still there, when you came back out, you knew God was with you. <laughs> That's what it was like. And, you know, I just whatever, whatever was there to do. I'm in this church plant, this hall, and we would, we would meet up. The first thing it would need, it would need to be swept. So I was the sweeper. So then the chairs would need to be put out. I put out the chairs. Whatever, I set up the PA equipment. Um, I did the sound, which is how I trained Godfrey in the box. You see, he's so good today because of me. Yeah. Hallelujah. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I owe you that fiver, Godfrey. And uh, so, so that was it. Whatever, whatever needed doing, it didn't matter. I was the number one volunteer in the place. And then, you know what they said? They said, well, Paul, you know, we'd, like, we'd love you to preach one time. So it was an evening service. So I thought, oh, praise God. So it was only about 10, 15 people. So I came down with this mighty revelation. And I was like, you know, ready to rock the house. I mean, this is it. This is, you know. And, and just like that, it was done. I thought, well, like, what now? What do I do? And God just said to me, just said, just keep on keeping on keep on pushing there's a destiny there for you to fulfill you know I honestly thought that people were going to get supernaturally healed as I was preaching that's what it that, you know that's what I was expecting it was like God where were you my faith was bigger than the anointing on my life at the time but that's actually a good place to be if you're believing God for something, right? If you're praying and you're believing God for something, those prayers are banked in heaven. Your faith is never in vain. Never. If God, if God for one reason or another, if God cannot use your faith in that particular situation, he'll bank it in heaven and he'll release it into another one. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. 
And you know, over the years, I have learned that thing. Keep on keeping on. Keep on pushing. Apply your faith and then don't let it go. There's some things that I've had to believe God for that have been so like unfulfillable at the time that all I could do was just apply my faith, leave it there, and trust that God was working on that thing and not be distracted again by it. Leave it with the Lord. In fact, there are some things, you can ask my wife, there's some things that I, would, I was uh, praying for and believing God for that then she'd ask me, oh, well, Paolo, what about this? What about that? What about the other? And I would say, it's with the Lord. Why? Because I can't touch it. If I take it back then I can be in trouble. What am I going to do with it? I've got to give it to the Lord. I've got to leave it with the Lord. Don't be distracted. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May that old prophet never visit your life in the mighty name of Jesus. There's some things as well. You know what? There's some things that one of the things that you can learn by this is that there's certain things that God gives you to do. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. The guy would probably have lived through if he hadn't been blurting out what God had told him so that the sons could go and tell the old guy who for one reason or another. Can you imagine? May God keep us from prophets like that in the mighty name of Jesus. They're out there just using their prophetic thing for the sake of, you know, their own selves. What did the guy have to prove? What a nonsense. But yet he did it. May you avoid that trap of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, and these are they on whom the word was sown. He says, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lusts of other things, enter in and choke out the word and it becomes unfruitful. And one time I was studying that thing. I said, God, you know, these have all got one thing in common. And I saw it in my spirit. It's distraction. The cares of this world, the worries. Oh, what am I going to do? What's going to happen? Well, blah, 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 blah. You ever been like that? Your mind is going 110 miles an hour. And, and it's like, wow, you know, this thing is so ins insurmountable. We were talking about this at the furnace on Wednesday. You know, that, that for so many of us, God is either too big or he's too small. That this problem is so big that God himself can't fix it. Or else he's so small. Uh, or sorry, yeah, that the problem is so big that God is, is just too big. You know, he's, he's out there running the universe and he's forgotten me. Or else God's too small. This problem could never be solved. And you know what? Our God is just right. He's just right. So distractions, the worries, the cares, all those kind of things that are going to try and meet you to distract you. All those rockets from the enemy that are going to try and distract you from the call of God on your life. Leave it to the Iron Dome. Leave it to the intercessory ministry of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is our intercessor in heaven. Can you say amen? Stand up. Let's thank God for his word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Lord, we bless the holy name of Jesus. We thank you so much for your hand upon our lives. Thank you for the richness of your blessing. Thank you, Father, for your presence meeting us, Lord. As we cross over into 2019, Lord God, we know that your blessing will be there. It will meet us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you do. Thank you, Lord God, because there is none like you. You are the awesome one, God. Father, even before we've stepped in to this year to come, we place it in your hands. Every distraction of the world, every distraction of the enemy, Lord God, we break its power in the mighty name of Jesus now. We thank you for this iron dome 
of intercessory prayer that you have given us, Heavenly Father. This way to intercept the plans and the strategies of the devil. We say every plan and every strategy of the enemy will fail in Jesus' mighty name. That we shall end 2019 the same way that we have ended 2018. With praise and with thanksgiving in our hearts. We greet our new beginnings in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for the ministry work that you've called us to. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the new relationships that you're going to bring into our lives. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the new adventures, Lord God, and the promotions in work, Lord God, for the way that you deal bountifully with your people. We bless your holy name, God. Jesus, you are our Lord, and you are the overseer of this year of new beginnings to come. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.